Hello everyone. Welcome back to another lesson with Rivera Fine Art Studios. Today I wanted to talk about shading from imagination. Um, so I'm going to go through a bunch of different objects um, and talk about how to shade them. But basically, when we're looking at different forms, we can basically break it down into spheres, boxes, and cylinders. Uh, and these are essentially forms that you'll see in almost any subject that you're drawing. You see it in portraits, you see it in figures, you see it in still lifes. Uh, they're the basic forms that can really be applied to just about any subject. Now, there are subtle variations that you can start to pick out once you have deciphered, um, you know, what type of form you're looking at. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. But first, I just want to talk about each of these forms separately. Okay, so let's start with spheres. Um, spheres are essentially just a round object, perfectly round shape. Uh, when I'm drawing them, I start them off as a circle. Okay, so I'm going to just do a series. I think I'll just stick with maybe three for right now. Okay, so three really quickly drawn circles. Um, not going for super refinement here. I just want to kind of get through some of the uh, the basic principles of shading. Okay, so um, one of the first things that we want to think about when we're looking at any form is the way that the light is hitting that form, and that's going to affect both the light shapes and the shadow shapes. So if I imagine in this top one as though the light were coming at an angle this way, so slightly in front and at a slight angle, I would want to think about how that shadow shape is going to come into play. Let me just clean these lines up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, but basically this is a type of lighting called form lighting where it's coming in at an angle and slightly in front and uh, about two thirds of it, the object are gonna be lit and the remaining third is going to be in shadow. Now with form lighting, what happens is the shadow shape reflects the shape of the object. So whenever we're looking at shadow, that is basically the area that is falling away from the light. Um, so all shadows are formed by pretty much the absence of light. Okay, now that, uh, I say that, but you actually do get light also in the shadow. So that may not be entirely true. Um, you get something called reflected light. So if we imagine this object is sitting on a tabletop, for example, the other thing I'm going to have is a cast shadow. Um, and then light is hitting the surface that the object's sitting on and bouncing back up into the shadow. So what happens then is we get a slightly darker portion of shadow right where the shadow begins. So right where that plane starts to turn away from the light, that is the darkest part of the, sh of the shadow. And that's called the core shadow. And then it gets lighter right here, again, because light is bouncing into this part and you're picking up reflective light. Okay, so for each of these spheres, what I'm going to do is imagine a slightly different lighting situation. So for this one down here, the light's coming in, let's say from the side and hitting it completely from the side. So what I'm gonna get is basically half of the sphere is going to be in light and half is going to be in shadow. And then I will just kind of block in that shadow shape. And 
these other spheres, I'm not going to add a cast shadow or anything. I'm just going to imagine as though they're floating in space. Uh, and then for this one, I am going to have the light coming in from the front. So the light's going to be hitting this area all in the front. So what then would happen is I'd get some shadow around the edges. Okay, so each of these lighting situations is going to accentuate the form in a different way. Um, so I've just gone ahead and I've done a little bit off camera, just a slight refinement. Um, and now I'm going to zoom in and just talk a little bit more about how to take this a step further and refine this a little bit further. So I've done a few other lessons on, um, actually one other lesson on drawing the sphere. That was a three-part uh, site size drawing that I had done. If you um, look through my channel, you'll find videos on that where I talk a little bit about the specifics of shading. Um, but with this first type of lighting situation, this form lighting, this is something that you see a lot in portraiture because uh, it accentuates the form so nicely. Um, the other thing that you get when you're looking at um, a sphere is you have a transitional tone that comes off the edge of the core shadow. So again, the core shadow is this darker band right in here. And I'm going to just do a quick label. So that is called the core shadow. And you also see that on the sphere that's being lit from the side. You don't really see that at all in the sphere that's being lit from the front. Um, but even so, when we think about lighting, we think about lighting is formed by plane changes. It's going to reflect the type of form that we're looking at. So when you think of a sphere, it has a rounded plane. There's a gradual turning away from the light. So then we get another value tone that comes off of that edge of that shadow, that core shadow. And that's called the half tone and you have the light hitting it somewhere around here, that's going to be the lightest area. That's the highlight. Um, so I'm just going to rough this in a little bit. Okay, so we can almost think about breaking this up into several different bands. So again, we have the core shadow here, this dark band. Then we have another transitional tone in here, which is the half tone. Uh, then it gets a little bit lighter up in here this shape, uh, that's the general light, and then the lightest portion is the highlight. Now I can also think about doing the same thing for the sphere that has side lighting. So again, that, that core shadow is still visible, and then it transitions into the direct light. Okay, so it's a, it, it slightly softens the edge of that shadow something like that. And that's going to help to make the form look uh, round. Okay, so let's talk now about drawing boxes or cubes um, or cube-like forms. Okay, so the shading is going to be very, very different when we're looking at a box. So uh, I'm just going to start off with a box in two-point perspective. So I'll do a lesson on perspective at a later date. Um, basically, we have lines moving at a slight angle that are converging to vanishing points. Um, so I have a top plane a, and two side planes that I will be seeing from this angle. Okay, now if I work with the same type of lighting, so once again, my light's coming in at an angle this way. It's going to be hitting, um, you know, probably this area the most directly. So I have to think about how my light or where my light and my shadow is going to fall on this cube. So each of these planes will be lit a little bit differently. Um, 
And a lot of times you don't get much variation when you're looking at a flat plane. It will just be a solid value. So let's say this side plane, um, you know, would be a little bit darker than this side plane. That's going to help to distinguish the plane change. Sometimes there's a very subtle difference. So these two planes might be almost the same value, but if I just make a, a, this a little bit darker, it helps to separate the planes. Now, if I had, for example, a slightly concave shape, so let's say this plane was turning this way a little bit, that is going to change the the way that the shadow falls into this. So in that case, I would get maybe a slightly darker value right at this edge, and then it would transition into the lighter value. Um, so just by putting that little difference of value, I can describe the, the way that that plane is turning. Um, and again, the light's coming in an angle this way, so the top plane's probably going to be picking up quite a bit of light. Um, maybe I would have just a little transition right in here, so it gets just slightly darker towards this back edge. And then this plane here will be my lightest plane. So I can very easily change my form depending on, or change the illusion of that form depending on how I'm shading my drawing. Okay, so I uh, just want to quickly talk about the cylinder and then I am going to um, draw a slightly more complex form. So. The cylinder really is uh, a great shape because you have a top plane, which is an ellipse, which is a flat plane, and then you have a rounded side plane. So this form really has the most variation when you're thinking about shading it. Um, so just gonna draw out the shape first. Okay, and the bottom plane, again, this is, this is a rounded surface right here. This is a rounded surface right here, so those lines are going to reflect the curvature of that. Now, let's say that I have, once again, a form light coming in this way. Um, what's going to happen is I go with sort of that rule of two-thirds of this is going to be uh, picking up light and that remaining third is going to be in shadow. So I'm just going to rough this in, and the same type of thing is gonna be happening. It's very similar to what you might see on the side lit sphere. So I have my core shadow in here, and then I have my half tone in here. Now what happens on this top plane, um, because it's flat, it's gonna be a more solid value. Uh, might be similar to what I have on the sphere where I might have a little bit of a gradation as it moves away from the light, but it's going to be much more subtle than what you're seeing on the side of the cylinder. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do the second part of this demo uh, at a later date, uh, just to save a little time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I, in the next lesson, I will talk about how to put some of these forms together to draw a portrait, uh, as well as a figure from imagination, and how to shade it from imagination. Okay, so hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every week. Uh, and in the meantime, happy drawing and painting.